And welcome back to the Spirited Shop. I am the Spirited Maker, and today we are going to make a box, not just any box, a box in the shape of a book. I watched woodworker Steve Ramsey make one, and I have some hardwood here, scrap, and I thought, let's give it a try and make one and see how it turns out, because I thought it looked pretty neat, and uh, maybe we can sell some. So I'm going to give it a try with some of this scrap wood I got, this hardwood scrap, and uh, let's see how it turns out. Anyway, let's get to it. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, I have crudely drawn it out in my Spirited Maker CAD, and this is what it's going to look like. You have the spine of the book, you have a bottom, a top that works as a lid, and what looks like the pages is actually the box inside, and we'll glue felt down so it can be used like a keepsake or jewelry box. So that's what I'm going for, and I will lay it out on. I think this is my uh, not mahogany, but uh, dark walnut. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but. The uh, outside of the box will be dark, and I'll use a lighter wood for the pages. I think it'll look really nice, so let's get to laying it out. And I think I'll do like seven, eight inches high, maybe five, six inches wide for the box. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what I can fit on these pieces of scrap, and we'll go from there. Okay, I've decided to go with a box that is 9 by 7 based on the dimensions of my scrap here. So a 9 by 7 inch box. I have a big enough pieces for the uh, two book covers. Uh, this will be the bottom. This will be actually the side that opens. So let me lay it out. We'll cut it out on my saw and start assembling it. Alright, looking back at the plans, in order to get this part thick enough, it's actually going to need to be in two pieces. So this will be the back, the book spine. I'll need to thicken it by adding a, some more pieces to it to give it thickness. So, let me figure out how tall I want this box book to be. Cut this down to size and add in some more pieces that we can glue on. All right, after messing around with it, I have come to the conclusion that a book with a two and a quarter inch thickness from top to bottom is going to look pretty good. It looks like a normal book size and it'll leave enough area inside the box for keepsakes, jewelry, whatever you want to use. Uh, we're going to go with two and a quarter for the overall height. Right there. Two and a quarter. So let's get to it.
Okay, this is what we've got so far, the two rough cut book covers and the spine. And I cut these so that the end grain will be end grain. And that way when I sand it, it'll all look like one piece. And that is where the hinge for the book is going to actually reside, right there. So it'll lift like that. And, and then we'll make the internal box, that is the pages. And we'll get it all nice and smooth and looking like a book. So we're making progress, slowly, but we're making progress. Trying to do this on camera makes it 10 times harder. <laughs> Okay, it's had time to dry, so this here will be the book spine, and these will be the covers. Now what we need to do is measure how thick the pages will be, which is this height right here, and so I'll use a speed square or square so right there lock it down that's how thick we need the pages to be and what are the pages going to be made out of this is the dark walnut for the outside and the inside the pages will be made from this brazilian yellow wood another hardwood that's not common uh, here in the u.s so but I have some scrap and it's pretty heavy. <laughs> it's hard to quantify how heavy certain woods are compared to others. It's funny because like I have cedar here and cedar is so light when compared to these hardwoods. But anyway, I want to keep it all hardwood, so I'm gonna use this Brazilian yellow wood. So let me now that I have the measurement. Set it up on the table saw and we'll rip a couple strips to make the inside of the box, which we know is like nine and a, or seven by nine. But the actual inside of the box will be whatever the inside of this is. So it's like eight and a eighth, eight and an eighth, and then we're gonna stop short of the end too so it looks like it's a book so let's get that all measured out and we'll cut a couple strips from the yellow wood we're getting close yeah it's still rough and we'll have to finish it up but we almost have all the basic parts done so a few more let's get it done all right we're over here on the table saw we are going to match up the pages with the spine so I'm going to use this as my guide to set my fence so that's exactly how tall we want these book pages to be so I'll rip them down see which side
Next, we got to notch the corners out of each one so that it fits like within it. So I'll lay that out and probably use the bandsaw to cut them. I don't know. Okay, I've marked the edges that I want to notch out. It's hard to see because it's dark wood and pencil mark, but I'm going to get it close and then I'll either sand it or file it in. So. That should do, and we'll get it, like I said, the final touch with by hand. <laughs> Since we're doing the table saw anyway right now, let's cut the uh, strip from the uh, yellow heart. That's going to be for the pages. Oops. Sorry, I bumped you. We only need one strip of it. And a little over about an inch and three eighths thick. So. Tell you what, I need a smooth surface to go on. So we gotta we gotta lop off a little bit before we smooth it up.
All right, using the router cable with a round over bit, I'm gonna round over the edges of this book spine. Sand it smooth. All right, getting closer and closer. All right, <clears throat> using the handy little belt sander here, I was able to just quickly touch it up until it in a bit. So this is the top that's going to open. And this is what's going to become the pages on the inside. So really the only thing left to do is mark the inside edges and cut these out on 45s. Glue them in there. We need a pinhole here on each side for a hinge. And we should be good. We're close. Really close. Then we'll put a nice finish on it. I'm not sure. I might do some tests with other pieces, scrap pieces, to see what looks better. But I'm, I'm not going to color it or anything, but I am going to protect it with something. So let me get some measurements done, and uh, we're really close. So the inside of the box is eight and three eighths. So I need a one piece eight and three eighths. And then I want it to actually come out to seven and a quarter. Let's go seven and three eighths as well. No, seven, maybe seven and an eighth. Cause I don't want it too close to the edge. So how really it should be whatever the thickness of this. So let me lay those out. I'll cut them. We'll glue it up. This is how you assure you got two of the exact same. Put them up. Barely touch the blade. Can move. Now I got two the exact same size. The longer side needs 45s on both edges and And you only need one on these. So. So let's lay it out. One, two, 
one side, the other, the front. And that will be the pages. And the top will go on like that. Of course, I'll have to line it up just right. Sort of how our book look. I think I'm gonna round over the front edges too, because that's how books usually are. We'll see. I'm gonna glue the bottom piece on first. Because it stays stationary. Clamp it. Let it dry. Yeah. That looks good. We got It's still 90. Yeah, I think it's close enough. Close enough. All right, I'm going to let that dry. Be back later to move on to more glue up. All right. I think it's had enough time to dry. I want to point out how lovely 104 degrees in the shop feels. <laughs> all right. We'll sand it all down. Let's glue on the pages. Can't remember. I think it was like that. Hmm. So that, that's going to be next. Let me think about how I'm going to hold the hold it in place while it glue dries. Hmm. I can clamp the out those here like that. What I need to do make sure that the same at this end pretty much on both sides and then yeah let's go with that let me get it glued up and I'll bring you back. All right, this is the glue up situation I've come up with. <laughs> so I'm going to let the sides of the book pages dry first. And then. Put 
put the front on like so. And then we just have to put the top on. Now let this dry for an hour, about an hour, and then I'll be back. Alright, we're going to glue in this last piece. So more on the sides. Let's, let me see this one. I'm going to go straight across with it. And then come back. It's moving on me. All right, let me get it clamped up and then I'll come back. All right, I said done away with the clamps and I just glued it down with pressure and put two pin nails on each side. Much easier to line it up better that way. So now I'm gonna let this dry. And we'll have to make the pivots for the hinge. And also we're going to have to relieve the edge so that when you lift it, it doesn't bind. So we'll need, we need to relieve one edge here and then one edge, the little corners of these to finish it up. So let's let this dry and we'll move on to the next part. Alright, I'm going to relieve one of the edges here of the book cover. All right, onward and upward. All right, let's take off this weight. That's it so far. Here's the top. Make sure it still fits. There we go. 
And mm. where did I? Huh. I must have used the wrong piece for the top. Well, let's see if we can fix this. All right, after some slight trimming, it because of the round over, it made it look different. It was a little bit off on the distance, but so now I got to hit some. Drill some holes for a pin, and then we got a clearance a little bit on the corners here. So, I'm just going to cut the head off of a panel nail and use that as my hinge pivot because I can sink it in and hide it. Make sure the gap's the same. Mm. got a clearance. Okay, so I put a couple of little nails in to, as hinges, just temporary. And that's what it's looking like so far. Let's go up a little. So, really all that's left is to sand it down and put a, a protective coat over it. So, that's next. That's it. We're fixed. We're really close to being done. And I think I'll glue felt on the bottom here. If I have any. <laughs> We're close to finishing this thing off. all right after trying it on a test piece i've decided to go with the wipe on poly because it's easy to use and fast so let's uh put a coat on it see how it looks Get it everywhere.
Just use a little brush to get in those corners. This is boring. I'll cut back to it when I'm done. You can see it. All right, I finished staining it and put two little nails in there. And what we have is a completed book box. I don't have felt, so I eventually want to put felt in there, but I do not have any at the moment. So that's the book box. What do y'all think? I, I, I did mess it up a little because I'm going to blame the extreme heat. When I originally cut it, I made sure to match up lengthwise, but I forgot to match it up widthwise. And so this one was a little bit shorter than the bottom one which I used to measure the book pages off of. So I had to do some on the fly modifications. I would have liked to have it come out a little bit more, but it is what it is. You learn from your mistakes or you let the heat overwhelm you. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for stopping by and spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed this little project. Like I said, I got it from Steve Ramsey on his woodworking channel. I thought it was a neat idea, and I like how it looks. So if you like this video, please give it a, a share to somebody. And like I said, thank you for spending time with me today. As always, my friend, God bless, and I'll see you next time. Please do all the internet, uh, YouTube stuff. Like, share, and subscribe. Later.